So Sandbox is one of the biggest gaming and metaverse projects out there right now. But most people know absolutely nothing about the Sandbox ecosystem. Their native token, Sand, is on so many big influencers' crypto lists, but very few people know exactly what it does or even how the tokenomics are structured. And once again, like so many other cryptocurrency tokens that I've broken down here on this channel, most of these results are random Sandbox price predictions with arrows pointing up to the moon and valuations up to $125 billion in the next six months, which is just ludicrous. So over the last couple of days, I dove deep past all this hype and hopium and into the facts, immersing myself deep into the Sandbox team interviews, the 44 page Sandbox white paper, testing the game and marketplace myself, and most importantly, understanding exactly how their tokenomic structure works. All so you don't have to. And what I found was really interesting. So if you appreciate my work, please hit that like button below, put on your metaverse cap, and let's jump straight in. So strangely enough, unlike most crypto projects, Sandbox was released in 2000. 2012. This means that it actually predates Ethereum itself, the blockchain it's currently based on. Now, obviously things were a lot different back then. Not only was it originally a two-dimensional blockchain, unlike the three dimensions it's got now, it also never intended to become a blockchain-based game. But nonetheless, in its 2D form, it attracted over 40 million downloads on iOS and Android. So with that really strong foundation, Sandbox relaunched in 2018 to become the metaverse sandbox style game that we know today. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware, because I definitely wasn't, but the name Sandbox actually refers to the style of game that Sandbox is. It's like if you developed a gun game and you called it first person shooter. It's the style of play is also the name of the game. And the Sandbox style of game has minimal character limitations placed on the gamer, allowing the gamer to roam and change a virtual world at will. Essentially one of those open world games that lets you run around and do whatever it is that you want. Now, the most exciting thing about this style of game is its insane popularity. In fact, the two best-selling games of all time are, you guessed it, sandbox-style games. That being Minecraft and GTA V. So one thing is for sure, the demand for this sandbox game is definitely there. I mean, Minecraft alone at the time of recording this video has 120 million monthly active users. But that brings us to the question of what does this sandbox blockchain game actually bring to the table? Well, sandbox themselves take this question very seriously. Not only do they currently have 200 employees, but they said they're gonna be employing hundreds more people by the end of this year. And all these people are gonna be aligning to try and recreate a Roblox cross Minecraft style game, but with blockchain capabilities. Because unlike in Minecraft, Sandbox will be decentralizing the player owned game assets inside of its metaverse. Their mission is to build a system where creators will be able to craft, play, share, and trade without central control, enjoying secure copyright ownership with the ability to earn sand. That is the ability to earn real money while playing. So what does this look like in action? Well, just like Minecraft, Sandbox is set up in a voxel-based metaverse. You can think of a voxel as essentially a 3D pixel. When you look at the bird's eye view of the Sandbox map, it's 408 lands wide by 408 lands tall, giving a grand total of about 166,000 plots of land. Of course, each of these individual plots of land are their own individual NFTs that can be bought, sold, and traded by the players. In fact, at the time I'm recording this video, these lands are trading on open can see the secondary marketplace for NFTs for just under one Ethereum. On each of these plots of land, if you own them, you can build and decorate them with whatever you want. You can probably relate to this sort of structure by picturing the internet being the backbone of the websites where you can buy a website domain name and on there you can put whatever you want, whether that's an online browser game, whether that's a blog post or even an e-com store. Well, it's the same thing with Sandbox. Sandbox is the backbone and you buy a piece of land off them and you can decorate and build whatever you want on top of that. Now, what do you actually decorate with? Well, you decorate with something called assets. This is another type of NFT that is available in the Sandbox game. And the cool thing about these assets are most of them are created and generated and published by other creators and players in the sandbox ecosystem. I'll teach you exactly how a little bit later in this video. But as I've never played Minecraft or Roblox before, I had no idea what you would actually put on a block of land that's worth any value. So I did a little bit of digging and basically found that anything you know that's fun or a good experience in the normal world, you know, real life, you could basically replicate inside one of these metaverse worlds like sandbox. You could create a game like Crossy Roads where players who are playing the sandbox game can come to your land and try and get through your obstacle course. You could host a trivia game show where people compete for rewards. You could build a soccer stadium to host player versus player tournaments, or even build a social hub, a gallery, or maybe even a casino. 
Sandbox also have a feature that allows you to directly import your Minecraft builds into Sandbox. So anyone who spent a lot of time or years building these awesome things over there in Minecraft can import them straight in to the play to earn version of Minecraft. And in the future, players will also be able to combine lands together to form estates. And estates will have the potential to be owned by multiple players to form districts. This will create more opportunities for landowners by combining their creativity and work. A really good example of this is nine neighbors who all have one plot of land each combine these together to form an estate. And you can turn this estate into some form of awesome theme park where each of the nine individual plots of land are owned by each individual owner and they build one ride or one experience on their plot of land. This is a really cool way of pulling resources, work and value. So you could sell one ticket in the native sand token to the entire theme park and you can automatically split this revenue nine different ways according to whatever smart contract is created. So how do you actually go about exploring this metaverse? Well, like all good games, you have your own personal identity and avatar that runs around in this game exploring the world. But unlike in normal games, your avatar is actually made up of various individual assets like your helmet or your arms, your torso, your legs, and these are all their own individual NFTs, which of course means they're actually owned by you, it can be created by other players and you can buy, sell and trade them for money. Remember, this is the main difference between something like Sandbox and Minecraft. And it's basically the technology that Sandbox are betting on to help them win in the long term. Sandbox do this by implementing interesting and nuanced gameplay mechanics by assigning predefined behaviors to the assets through visual scripting notes. Now, what does this actually mean? Basically, when you build up an asset like this, you can put different characteristics and powers into them to determine their rarity and their actual function in the game. And of course, you can't just go make any asset as rare as possible. This is going to cost you in their native sand token. Okay, so the land and the avatars both use the user-generated asset economy to customize their looks and function. But this sounds super complicated and it's gonna be really hard, right, to build up these in-game assets. And there's gonna be no way that the normal person without coding or graphic design or software experience is gonna be able to go create these in-game assets, let alone have them be sold and bought by players of the game. Well, Sandbox also have really good news here. Just like it was really hard to build an e-commerce store before Shopify came along, Shopify existed to give you all the tools and resources and themes and packs to download and integrate without you having to know all the code or any crazy language. Well, Sandbox basically have this, but for making in-game voxel asset. Because their CTO said the main reason that their world is based on voxels is because you don't have to be a visual artist or game developer to create these assets. All you basically need to do is paint it pixel by pixel on their voxel editor. If you know how to build Legos, you're gonna know how to build in-game assets on their vox editor. They also have the ability for you to animate these. So you can create movement and purpose that can be integrated into any land and any experience that you have in the sandbox. Once again, with no coding or animation experience needed. Pretty cool. And of course, Sandbox comes with their built-in native NFT marketplace where you can buy and sell these assets. And of course, because these assets are NFTs, you can buy and sell them on any secondary marketplace like OpenSea. Now eventually the plan is that all creators that are building in their Vox edit and animation suites are gonna be able to publish their creations into this markup. The rumor is this is gonna happen as soon as they migrate over from the Ethereum to the Polygon chain. But at the moment, the function unfortunately is only available for approved creators. And right now these approved creators are pretty big time brands. People like Snoop Dogg, World of Women, or even the Smurfs. Now the really cool thing is because these things are NFTs, they can also have additional perks built into the smart contract. For example, if you own one of these Snoop Dogg's 10,000 avatars called the Doggies, you get access to private metaverse parties and experiences that aren't available to anybody else. And talking about Snoop Dogg, one thing that Sandbox are phenomenal at, probably the best in the industry right now, is creating partnerships and brand deals with big time brands and celebrities. They work with big time brands like Samsung, Atari, and Adidas, and individuals like Snoop Dogg and Steve Aoki to create incredible, mutually beneficial in-game experiences. For example, Steve Aoki has a land where he hosts his own metaverse concerts. This draws a lot of people to go and dance and socialize while listening to Steve Aoki's music. The CTO of Sandbox said that these events are hugely beneficial for attracting new users. They leverage big names and even make money for both the performer and for Sandbox, just like a regular concert because they can sell limited edition merch and memorabilia, but this time in NFT form. Big brands are also attracted to something like Sandbox because they have over a million monthly active users that could go and visit their land or experience or even virtual 3D voxels 
store. You could imagine if there was a local mall that had a million people go there every single month, the rent for a shop there would be pretty expensive. And if you actually think about it, you're not renting it on Sandbox, you're actually buying that real estate. So imagine buying a brick and mortar store that has the foot traffic of a million people per month. Stores like Build-A-Bear Workshop could have this 3D voxel version of their real store where you could go have an awesome experience building whatever bear that you create inside the Vox editor and Build-A-Bear could charge you in their native token of sand right there in the metaverse where you get the NFT version that you could use as an avatar or walk around with and also they may ship a cuddly furry version to your house so it can sit on your shelf. And since Minecraft currently have 120 million monthly active users, Sandbox believe they can scale their player base into the tens of millions over the next few years. They're even working on a mobile game and potentially console games such as PS4 or Xbox in the future. Of course, they want to keep intact their mission of decentralizing everything and having things be a player-owned economy even on these consoles. And by the way, if you're sick of these most insane token breakdowns that you see on YouTube with crazy price prediction, I am too. And that's why I create videos like this to help bring you real facts and knowledge in the Web3 world. And if you're enjoying this video, you may enjoy our Patreon community even more. We have deep dive token breakdowns, in-depth educational resources from the smartest people currently in this space, and a simple yet effective software that tracks influencer wallets and gives you an alert when someone buys, such as Alex Becker. So you don't have to wait till they pump their coin or NFT or project into their social media. You're getting in when they do. We have a lot more awesome stuff in there, but if that's something that sounds right for you, check the link in the description. Okay, now let's get on to the good stuff. The tokenomics, utility, and native currency of the sandbox ecosystem, sand. At the time of recording, sand is priced at 88 cents with a circulating market cap of 1.3 billion and a fully diluted market cap of 2.6 billion. There's a fixed supply of 3 billion tokens of which 50% are currently in circulation. At the announcement of Facebook changing its name to Meta, the sand token soared to an all-time high of $8.44 with a circulating market cap of over $7 billion. Sand have an awesome DeFi ecosystem that seems to be working really well where stakers can lock up a big portion of sand taking it out of the supply of the ecosystem and be earning a variable APY back as a reward. The token and fee structure of the sand ecosystem looks pretty damn healthy. For any land sales, premium NFT sales, in-game subscription and services and all market place transaction fees will have a royalty that gets split 50 50 between the sandbox company where they vow to re-spend that on improving the sandbox ecosystem and the sandbox foundation that goes directly back to rewarding creators players and investors of the game the play to earn ecosystem is also really cool whether you're a player a creator or an investor there's a lot of ways for you to make money with sandbox players can earn the sand token by chance skill or by getting tipped for providing value in the game creators who make in-game assets will make money from selling them to players participating in art challenges and even applying for awards from the creators fund which has been established to incentivize early asset creators for the game what are my personal thoughts on sandbox well i really like sandbox and of course this is not a sponsored video but the industry that they're in the game and their team all seem top notch one big concern i do have with ecosystems like this though is a lot of the time they could have the world's best game with a massive player base who'd love to play it but that value is no way tied back to their token but from what i can personally see both the sand token and their land NFT assets have a fixed supply. And if Sandbox really do go on to grow to tens of millions of monthly active users, there's going to be a lot more demand for these tokens and the supply is going to stay the same. However, with that being said, you always have to question, is this not already factored in? I mean, after all, Sandbox is the tied second largest ecosystem metaverse out there right now behind ApeCoin. And it's currently got a valuation of $3 billion for its token alone. This doesn't take into account any of its NFT assets. And I mean, that's a really big company with a very big valuation. In terms of playing the speculation or social arbitrage game, of course, I think Sandbox will continue to be a blue chip in the next bull run. However, in terms of long-term scarcity, I might personally prefer to pick up and scoop up some of their land over their token, especially as more and more big brands get pulled towards this ecosystem because they can see a good ROI based on how many players are actually playing the game and how many players are gonna go ahead and see and shop with their brand. But of course, the token will probably outperform the NFT in the short term. Again, these are my personal opinions. I think Sandbox has 
has done a phenomenal job at really hiding the blockchain technology behind everything. They call NFTs assets and they have a marketplace inbuilt in the game just like any other game that most people are used to playing. And I know it probably sounds like the most boring part of it all, but the part that I was most excited about was actually Ledger's blockchain security school inside the metaverse. This was basically a little library that was constructed that went and taught you about blockchain security in a 3D experience. So this felt far superior to learning from a course and it felt like way more fun and immersive to actually learn about something that I probably wouldn't have bothered in a 2D world. And I think this experience could be really expanded upon into someday being a metaverse that is learn to earn, since there's a lot of societal value for actually being educated. A couple of potential hiccups, Sandbox are currently migrating from ETH over to Polygon to save on transaction fees. This could potentially be a bumpy transition and the other hiccup is they host everything on Amazon Web Services, which basically means for something that's super decentralized, all their hosting is dependent upon Amazon. This is the opposite to owning their own node network like Gala Games, who we have done a token breakdown on this channel for you to watch next. Or if you prefer to go deeper on Sandbox, we'll be uploading the full token deep dive in our Patreon this week, link in the description.